So it would appear that the body language guy has decided that he is officially bored of Harry and Meghan and is making no further videos on the subject. Oh dear. I hope all of his subscribers don't come and watch me instead. That body language guy thinks he's so great with his certificates and qualifications and his silver plaque from YouTube. I think we all know what's happened here, don't we? I'm sorry to have to break it to you like this, body language guy fans. The body language guy, or Jesus Enrique Rosas, Enrique, the name for Harry in Spanish. Coincidence? Very good parents! The body language guy has clearly been paid off by Archwell Productions to keep quiet. Unfortunately, you're just gonna have to rely on me for reliable reporting from now on. No, not buying it. Okay then. It was worth a try. I am, of course, joking. Uh, you know, you do get the odd neurodivergent person in the comments who doesn't get that I'm being sarcastic. And I totally understand him wanting to uh, move on from Harry and Meghan, but um, I don't know, there's 500 pages of a memoir to get through here that, uh, you know, I'm gonna milk it till it's fucking dead, all right? But do let me know in the comments if there's other stuff you'd like to see me making videos about. I don't know, for example, this week I had a few ideas. There was Jacinda Ardern, there was the whole drama with Stephen Crowder, Candace Owens and Ben Shapiro, which I was kind of interested in. Jordan Peterson was sort of involved in that as well. Anyway, we're going to uh, read another passage from uh, Harry's memoir today, and yes, I have got a plaster on my chin now. Uh, let's not get distracted. Concentrate, okay? I know I look like shit today. Believe me, I feel like shit. I'm just gonna power through this because, you know, I don't think I am too good for Harry and Meghan, right? Like some YouTubers who are all, you know, I'm bored. No, I'm gonna soldier on. We're on chapter 43. We're in the third part of the memoir, right? And at the third part, we've got through the Old Testament and the New Testament. We're now into the weird and wonderful Book of Mormon, right? We're interpreting the gold plates from inside that hat, just like Joseph Smith, right? <clears throat> That's where we are. And uh, we're towards the end of chapter 43 in the third part where Harry is talking about tiaras. And then we move into chapter 44 where he talks about the Secret Service or Special Forces or something like that, training Megan or not training Megan, I don't know. It's all fucking hilarious though, I can guarantee you that much, so I'll keep watching, okay? All right? You don't go running back to uh, body language guy, eh? He ain't making any more videos like this, all right? He's moved on to more meaningful stuff, hmm? Well, you know, um, but, but not me. I, no, not, not a chance. Anyway, the first thing we learn in chapter 43 of the third part of this absolute epic novel, and it is a novel, is that uh, Harry's wife, Meghan, um, they, were, they were debating before the wedding whether she could wear a veil, you know, what with her being a divorcee and all. Um, and I kind of get why they would debate that. It's kind of ridiculous, isn't it? Wearing a veil when you are in fact impure, right? when you've been absolutely slammed <laughs> by other men. Now, I, I don't know, it, it, it is, it, there's something in it for me, right? I don't care, right? If, if you're a divorcee and you wanna wear the veil, you wanna reconstruct your hymen or whatever, you go ahead and do that. But wearing the veil as though you're some virgin that can't be revealed to your, and to your, uh, to, to your, to your husband out of wedlock. He is just your, Fiancé, you're affianced, you're not married yet, you know? <laughs> I, I, uh, oh, whatever, I don't know, I guess it's petty. But anyway, they're talking about whether she could, or whether she could or should wear a veil, right? Who cares? Anyway, eventually, they let her wear the veil. And so then came the big problem of matching the veil with the tiara, you know? Uh, the tiaras that are worth millions and millions of pounds, which... Uh, which the royal family gave to her. They offered her Diana's tiara, and she was like, meh, I don't know. But then, shortly after the wedding, sh shortly before the wedding, however, Granny reached out. Reached out, Harry? You're nearly 40 years old. I hate it when people say reach out. It's so American. It's like the way he pronounces the chapters. Chapter 40, 43, 44. You fucking, what's wrong with you? Bottle, you dwad. And, and I, I shouldn't dwell on it, but, you know. Shortly before the wedding, however, 
Granny reached out. She offered us access to her collection of tiaras. That's nice of Granny, you know, the Queen of England, to offer you <laughs> her collection of tiaras, right? She even invited us to Buckingham to try them on, to Buckingham Palace to try them on, not just Buckingham, the area, you know, on a street corner. Uh, she, up, uh, she invited us to Buckingham Palace to try them on. Do come over, do come over. I remember her saying, yes, of course, you would remember her saying, come over when she asked you to come over. Mm. Um, anyway, so they went into her private dressing room and uh, they were looking at all the tiaras. And um, and th this is when we're introduced to Angela, the Queen's official dresser, who's a right bitch, right? She didn't want to, she didn't want Megan wearing a tiara or a veil when she ain't held virgin, right? And um, she seemed a little bit suspicious of Megan. I bet she's based. You know, I bet Angela is cool as fuck. Um, five tiaras were arrayed on a table and Granny directed Meg to try each one on before a full-length mirror. I stood behind, watching. Yeah, five paces behind you. Henpeck. <laughs> one was all emeralds. One was aquamarines. Each was more dazzlingly stunning than the last. Each took my breath. <gasps> I bet it did, Harry. Anyway, so the Queen was being all nice and grandma-like and queen-like and, oh, you know, great like she always was. And uh, we left the palace. We left the palace feeling awed and loved and grateful. Well, thank God for that, Harry. You felt grateful after... You know, the Queen gave you a selection of tiaras for your divorcee wife to look at, right? And you chose the most beautiful one, hmm? Yeah, I'm glad you felt grateful. I felt grateful when my grandmother gave my wife a selection of tiaras to choose that were, you know, all emeralds, all aquamarines or whatever. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know what you mean. I felt grateful too. Anyway, the thing is here, though, the bitch, Angela, the Queen's dresser, was being really nasty to them, right? Let's, let's hear how she bullied Meghan, because she's probably racist, isn't she? A week later, we contacted Angela and asked her to please send us the chosen tiara. We said, please, please, can you give us a tiara? Um, so we could tr practice putting it on. <laughs> We'd done research and we'd spoken to Kate about her own experience and we'd learned that Granny's warning was spot on. She'd warned them that tiaras were hard to put on, you know? Especially if you're a scumbag nobody who doesn't wear loads of tiaras all the time. Like, uh, like Megan. Anyway, what am I talking about? Um, yeah. The placing of the tiara was an intricate, elaborate process. God, Jesus, let, get to something interesting, Danny. All right? Complicated, time-consuming. We'd need at least one dress rehearsal. Yeah, the, the, the funny bits are coming, believe me. Um, for some reason, however, Angela didn't respond to any of our messages. We kept trying. No response. They wouldn't give us the, one of the most expensive tiaras on the planet Earth the minute we asked for it, right? Do you understand what they've been through? They've been to hell and back, these two, dealing with these vicious, rabid racists all the time, you know? They wouldn't just give us the fucking tiara worth about 50 million pounds. Just give it to us! Right? When we finally reached her, after reaching out to her, idiot, when we finally reached her, she said the tiara would require an orderly and a police escort to leave the palace. Uh, palace? What the hell's a palace? 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 How does he pronounce palace? Palace. Pa pa palace. Uh, I don't know. That sounded a bit much. Did it? Did it sound a bit much, Harry? The 50 million pound tiara... That, that you, you think that she's just going to bring it to you on a bike? You know, the minute you snap your... Oh, God. That sounded a bit much, but all right. I said, if that's the protocol, 
Let's find an orderly and a police officer and get the ball rolling. Let's get the ball rolling on the tiara, on the £50 million tiara that we need an escort for. Uh, you know, for someone who's so worried about security, you don't understand like an elderly woman thinking, you know, I can't just give you the tiara. I can't just bring it to your house or whatever. I need, you know, it needs to be... Anyway. Oh, God. Anyway. Let's find an orderly and a police officer and get the ball rolling. Time was running out. Time was running out to get our hands on the £50 million pound tiara. Inexplicitly, inexplicitly, inexplicably, she replied, Can't be done. Oh, no. Vile. Why can't it? Her schedule was too busy. I, now, I don't know. Could this be... What's going on here? Is this just not true? Is it... Is it that she didn't like them for some other reason? And she was deliberately trying to be awkward? God knows. God knows. She was being obstructive, obviously, but for what reason? Racism, Harry! She's a vile racist. That's why everyone dislikes your wife. Because they're racist. We couldn't even hazard a guess. I bet you hazarded loads of guesses. I considered going to Granny, but that would presume that would probably mean speaking an all. <laughs> that would probably I can't read. <laughs> God, I'm feeling rough today. I'm really sorry, guys. But that would mean sparking an all-out confrontation, and I wasn't quite sure with whom Granny would side. Right, Granny, the Queen. Your queen. No, whatever, Granny. Uh, it would be endearing if it wasn't Harry saying it. <sighs> also, to my mind, Angela was a troublemaker, and I didn't need her as an enemy. Above all, she was still in possession of the tiara. <laughs> Jesus, why, God, you didn't know all this drama was going on behind the scenes, did you? You just don't have a clue what these people have been through, right? She held all the cords. Anyway, we get to chapter 44 now. And uh, they talk about the um, the alleged uh, special services coming to train Megan for kidnapping events and stuff like that. Which Harry says isn't true. Though the press was mostly laying off Meg, mostly staying focused on the approaching wedding, the harm was already done. The harm was already done. So when the press lay off, yeah, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Our life's already ruined. Anyway, you know, nothing's ever good, is it, in their life? It's just <laughs> the level of delusion. You know, everything's just shit, you know, because they criticised us at the time. They're not criticising us now. They're all happy about the wedding. And, um, and that's bad, too, because, you know, there's no, there's no way anything can ever get better. And things are just shit all the time when you're Prince Harry and Meghan Markle. The harm was already done. After 18 months of trashing her, they'd riled up all the trolls. What? What did you call me? Right. I'm not a troll. They'd riled up all the trolls who were now crawling out of their cellars and lairs. I'm not in a lair. This isn't a lair, all right? I'm not Klaus Schwab. I don't have a lair. Or a cellar, for that matter. Ever since we'd acknowledged that we were a couple, we'd been flooded with racist taunts and death threats on social media. Bollocks. Sorry, but no. That's not true. You might have got the odd lunatic because you're so well known. Right? There are lunatics out there who say crazy things. Um, but yeah, according to him, we were flooded with racist taunts and death threats on social media. See you later, race trader. He actually says that. See you later, race trader. Trader. Uh, that's traitor, by the way. He just pronounces it trader. Right? Uh, who said that? See you later, race trader. Is that a thing people say? Is that a thing that racists say? I don't know. Um, but anyway, Harry says they said that. But he's put it in, in parentheses. I don't know if he means, like, that was their attitude. 
racetrack. <laughs> Who is calling him that? Who's ever called anyone that? Like, I, I don't know. That's insane. But now the official threat level used by the power security to allocate personnel and guns had reached vertiginous heights. Vertiginous. I had vertigo. Uh, um, in pre-wedding conversations with the police, we learned that we'd become the prized target for terrorists and extremists. Yeah, it's a royal wedding, you know. Terrorists and extremists want to attack whatever is kind of symbolic of their perceived enemy. So whether that's like the World Trade Centers or the royal family or a prime minister or something, you know, yeah, that's probably true. No. I mean, what's that? Just because you're Harry and Meghan, you're so... You're such narcissists, it's just... I can see why uh, body language guy got bored. <laughs> I am repeating myself a bit. But this is great still. Isn't it great still? Say that it's great still. <laughs> yeah. We'd become the prized target for terrorists and extremists. I remembered General Dennett saying I was a bullet magnet. And a pussy magnet. <laughs> That anyone standing next to me would be unsafe. That's probably true. Well, I was a bullet magnet again, but standing next to me would be the person I love most in the world. Megan. All right. The virgin princess in her pure white veil. <laughs> the 18 year old virgin from Hollywood. Um. Oh, what am I on about? <laughs> there's, been, there's been some reporting. Now, this is Ermid Skirby, who wrote an unofficial biography, right? There's been some reporting about the palace. About the palace. Why, why am I struggling with the word palace today? I don't know. There's been some reporting about the palace deciding to, uh, to instruct Meg in guerrilla warfare. <laughs> And survival tactics in the event of a kidnapping attempt. Guerrilla warfare? Guerrilla warfare. You know, like uh, going up into the mountains and, uh, and launching surprise attacks on your enemy's military bases. Yeah? Oh, oh Mid Scobie might have said something stupid like that. I don't know. Um... A best-selling book describes the day special forces came to our house, grabbed Meg, put her through several intense days of drills. <laughs> Can you imagine Meghan Merkel going through several days of intense drills? <laughs> that I would pay to see. Several days of intense drills pushing her into the back seats of cars and car boots, speeding away to safe houses. All of which was utter nonsense. So it didn't happen, according to this guy. Meg wasn't given one minute of training. On the contrary. On the contrary, they said, you're yeah, fine, go out into the public and just pretend like you're safe. On the contrary... The palace floated the idea of not giving her any security at all because I was now sixth in line to the throne. He was only sixth in line to the throne. Right? They didn't want to give us any guns at all or any guerrilla warfare training, which I thought was totally unfair because I was just like sixth in line to the throne. You know, he, he has a dig a few times at, at, uh, at William's kids. At, um, at what's his face? George, George, you know, he's becoming irrelevant now because George was born. That little furball. I was first in line. Um, yeah, how, um, but yeah, anyway, he says, on the contrary, they didn't want to give her any training or guns or guerrilla warfare training at all. Oh, I wish the reports about special forces were even partly true. I wish they'd just trained her a little bit in assault rifle guerrilla warfare, you know, but not at all. How I longed to phone my mates in special forces, have them come and train Meg and retrain me. You know, I feel like that sometimes. It's like, I think I might just ring the special forces, my mates in the special forces, and say, come and train us, right? For fuck's sake. Or better yet, pitch in. 
protect us. We don't. Uh, do you not have money to pay for security? You know, because it seems like you left the royal family and had millions and millions and millions of pounds to, you know, go and buy a forty million dollar mansion. Couldn't you have spent that on security? Um, I guess it was just not security, you know, at the taxpayer's expense, which, you know, makes you feel more important, doesn't it, I guess? Um, pitch in, protect us, for that matter, how I wished I could send the special forces to go and grab that tiara. <laughs> he actually says that. And at that point, I am out. This is insane. It's wonderful, though. And uh, what shall I make my next video on? More of this shite? Do you want to find out if the special forces managed to uh, overpower the, the the evil Angela and get the tiara? Or do you want to hear me ripping into someone else? I'll do whatever you want. Not like some other people on YouTube who are just like, oh, I'm bored. You know, they think they're better than us. They think they're better than you, right? I'm joking. Much love to the body language guy. He's doing a much better job than I ever will. <laughs> I'm not jealous, not jealous at all.